Hello, my name is Anne Howard Simpson, Acting Head of Nottingham High Infant and Junior School. We have a number of questions that are often asked by prospective parents, and so in this video I'm going to be answering some of those questions. What happens in the assessment process? For each year group entry, the assessment seeks to make a professional judgment on the suitability of this school for your child at that point in time. And thus the assessment process is different depending on the age of your child. The vast majority of children we assess find that the assessment is very manageable and our staff work hard to make the process as low stakes as possible so that the experience of the child is a very positive one. It is sometimes the situation that we are not the right setting for your child at this particular time, but may become the right setting in future years. The staff that assess your child have many years experience in doing so and in teaching children. Our school is a fabulous mix of children. Some are shy, some are less so. The assessment is designed to see the potential of each child. For assessment into EYFS, we are mindful of both the age of the child and their current educational setting, be that home or a nursery. Assessment in other years takes into account that your child has had some school experience already. We seek to establish where your child is on a national and age standardised scale to judge if our school is the correct setting for them. We look at their current literacy and numerical skills and judge if we feel they would thrive here. We would not expect or ask a child to complete a task that would not normally be expected at their age. All families are encouraged to visit the school and we offer taster sessions for prospective pupils. How can I prepare my child for the entrance assessment? We don't recommend that your child revises or studies for our entrance assessment. We prefer to see your child as they are to enable us to make a genuine judgment of your child's readiness for our school. Our admissions team can give you some further information about what your child's admissions experience will look like, but we don't expect your child to have done any extra work to prepare. For children seeking to join us who are already in a school environment, we would encourage them to get in touch or apply if they are doing well in their own primary school and they do not need to revise or do anything extra to prepare. When can I drop off and pick up my child? Our senior school dining hall is open from 7.45am and a choice of hot and cold breakfast is available for parents and children to enjoy together. Drop off begins at 8am. Pupils can go straight to their classroom where there will be a variety of activities to get them settled and ready for the day ahead. Children must be in school by 8.30 a.m. for registration. The school day finishes at 3.45 p.m. and after school club is then available free of charge until 4.30. After school clubs and supervision then continue until 5.45 p.m. during which the children can relax have a snack and enjoy a whole host of fun activities to help unwind from a busy day of learning. How can I visit the school? Whatever year group you are interested in applying for, there are opportunities during term time for you and your child to visit us at the school and get to know us better. We offer taster sessions for children entering reception up to year six. We also host tours of the infant and junior school, during which a member of our senior management team will show you all the exciting opportunities that are on offer at our school and answer any questions you may have about your child joining us. Please do contact our admissions team to arrange your visit. Describe the learning in EYFS. As with every year group in EYFS, we aim to meet the needs of the individual child. In EYFS, the timetable for the children is a combination of teacher-led activities, such as a phonics lesson or one-to-one -one sessions, and continuous provision, which allows the children to independently explore and develop their skills through activities designed and planned by their teacher. The teaching is flexible, adaptive, and sensitive to the interests of the children. At the start of each year, the class teacher will conduct a baseline assessment which then influences which areas your child will need support to achieve and in which areas they will be achieving above our expectations. Our EYFS classrooms are bright and spacious areas which allow for a variety of activities to happen, including one-to-one -one sessions, group work and play. Your child's learning is tracked carefully and evaluated each day and is communicated to you both formally 
and informally. How many of the Year 6 pupils transition to Year 7? It is our goal to ensure that where suitable, our Year 6 pupils transition seamlessly into Year 7 at the senior school, and the vast majority do. In doing so, they are well prepared for the academic and pastoral demands of the senior school here at Nottingham High School, where they are supported by their friends and their teachers. This year, as is often the case, every child in Year 6 has secured a place at the senior school, for example. In a very small minority of cases, and this is not the case every year, the professional judgment of the IJS staff might be that the high school is not the best setting for a child's senior years. Those conversations are very likely to begin around year five and involve input from parents and staff in order to make the best decision for the individual child. Occasionally, it is thought that a pupil will thrive in a different school and we support parents and children in that move. Regardless of the decision, every child remains an important part of our school and receives the same level of care and attention until they transition to their new school environment. What is the ratio of boys to girls? The gender ratio in the school differs depending on the age range and fluctuates each year. Across the school, there is roughly a 65-35 split, but this is changing all the time and we are moving ever closer to the 50-50 mark. The school functions very much as a co-educational environment. We do not look to educate boys and girls, but instead look to educate children as individuals. And so all opportunities are available to all children. We don't treat all of the girls as the same as each other or all of the boys as the same as each other. They're not a homogenous mass. Instead, we treat each child as an individual and we meet their own individual needs, celebrating them as a person. Do children sit in rows and is it a very formal atmosphere? The school seeks to provide a stimulating educational environment where every child can thrive and enjoy their learning. We tend not to sit pupils in rows as we do not feel that this facilitates quality learning. Our children learn through a variety of methods, individually and collaboratively, as we seek to help them develop the skills they will need to become effective learners. Each year, we look to give those next steps to learning that the pupils need to make excellent progress in their personal and academic development. Our pastoral care underpins our drive for academic excellence, and we believe that children who feel that they are valued and belong, and children who experience appropriate stretch and challenge and support, will those children are in the best place to become successful adults. Our teachers are passionate about making sure the children enjoy their learning and thrive. To do this, there is of course the need to ensure that children have the correct environment to learn and the atmosphere within lessons is one of well-managed, productive enjoyment. How large are the classes? In the infant school, we attempt to keep class sizes at around 18 pupils with a teacher and a teaching assistant for the main parts of the curriculum. In the junior school, we attempt to keep the sizes at around 20 pupils to each teacher. There is learning support available throughout the school, which will assist teachers in their planning for children with specific learning differences, or may offer individual sessions to help children develop their skills in certain areas. How much pressure is put on the children, and how do you help them cope with mistakes? Undue pressure is counterproductive to a child's development, and so what we seek to do is involve the children in their own progress so that they become self-motivated to achieve. Because the class sizes are small, staff are exceptionally quick to learn the ways in which each child is best encouraged. Many high-achieving children struggle with making mistakes or getting things wrong. The school promotes the ethos that where there is no challenge, there is no learning and we actively encourage the pupils to identify, celebrate, and crucially learn from our mistakes. Through our academic curriculum and pastoral time, the children are taught that their journey through life will often have bumps in the road, and we teach them strategies to cope with these times and indeed welcome them as opportunities for learning. Where do the children who attend come from? Our children come mainly from the city of Nottingham and surrounding areas, although some travel from Derbyshire and Leicestershire. Many of our children are bi or trilingual, and this is a skill which we value highly at our school. We are very proud of our diverse cohort, and we look for ways where children can share each other's cultures. 
How does your curriculum differ from other schools? The school broadly follows the national curriculum, but this is carefully tailored to meet the abilities of the children within the school. We extend the curriculum by including additional experiences or subjects to enhance the children's education. For example, we use the outdoor classrooms and spaces as areas to expand the children's experiences or to facilitate lessons. Outdoor education forms a part of our timetable. The children are able to participate in philosophy lessons during their time here, as we believe that they should learn skills of thinking for themselves as individuals, questioning accepted ideas and presenting their own opinions. They also have access to many of the facilities at the senior school, such as the swimming pool, the sports fields, the theatre and the practical laboratories. All children are able to participate in specialist music lessons each week, and they can also opt to have one-to-one -one music lessons on a particular instrument. In most terms, we also have themed weeks, where the children and staff have the opportunity to develop their knowledge in certain areas, such as in STEM subjects or in the creative areas. How much homework is there? The amount of homework differs greatly, depending on the age of the child. In general, Emphasis is placed on mathematics and literacy activities, and there are often additional optional tasks which most children choose to complete. Whilst we see merit in a child's growing ability to work independently after school, we also want a system which allows them time to join community clubs to practice music skills or other skills independently, as well as being able to relax in the evenings and at weekends. Thus, the homework is carefully balanced and monitored. What clubs and trips do you offer? We believe in the gift of opportunity, and so we look to further enhance the children's experiences in as many ways as we can. This might be through ensuring that every child has the chance to represent the school in a sports team, or through the wide variety of day and residential trips available. We also offer competitions and activities in areas such as music, poetry, art, or public speaking. We have a wide, ever-changing and varied clubs programme that considers the interests and requests of the children. These clubs happen at either lunchtime or at the end of the school day. Some of our most popular clubs include chess, tennis, dance, Lego, choir and orchestras or ensembles. How will I know how my child is progressing and what is happening at school? The school very much sees the collaboration and positive relationship between home and school as pivotal in a child's success. We are very keen to keep in close contact with our parents and so parents have the email address of every staff member. We communicate to parents whenever this is necessary and ask that they do likewise in a belief that issues or concerns are best addressed before they grow. Staff are likely to chat to you as you pick up your child or drop a quick email or note into your child's reading diary. There is a formal opportunity to speak to your child's teachers at least once each term, and a written report is sent home at the end of each term. However, we react and adapt to the journey of the individual child, and so any concerns from school are likely to have been raised with you outside of these formal occasions. The school also publishes a number of weekly, fortnightly and termly newsletters to help you keep up to date with life at school, and we use our Twitter account on a daily basis. I hope that I have answered most of the questions that you have about your child joining us here at Nottingham High Infant and Junior School. If you have any further questions that I haven't answered in this video, please do email us on admissions at nottinghamhigh.co.uk. You can also find out more information by accessing our other infant and junior school videos, which are available on our website.